Hi, my name is Taylor and I'm from Miami. Please like and subscribe. I remember being five years old and mom and dad throwing me the biggest party ever. We were all so happy until dad got a phone call and his smile changed and stayed that way for a very long time. The company dad worked for caught fire. From there onwards, our entire lives started going downhill and sometimes I felt he blamed me. Once when I was 10 and we took a walk through the park, I saw the ice cream truck and ran to it. And dad immediately pulled me back and said the most hurtful thing ever. You know I don't have enough for ice cream, so please ask before you just run to things. We're already in enough debt because of that stupid birthday party we had for you. I stood looking at him with tears in my eyes and he didn't even care. Then suddenly this girl tapped me on my shoulder. You can have some of my ice cream. She had the prettiest smile. Thank you so much, you're so sweet. She introduced herself as Lisa and she was new in town. We immediately became best friends, but little did I know that Lisa had a crazy side to her. Once when we were in fifth grade, she stole the answer papers for a big test and because she was my best friend, the principal called me in for questioning as well. I was so mad at her. Lisa, what you did was wrong. Now everybody thinks I'm a bad kid. I'm so sorry, Taylor. It's just that I really struggle with studying. Please forgive me. Fine, I'll still be your friend on one condition. We study together. We used to study at my house all the time. And then when I was in seventh grade, I asked to see her house for a change. Lisa tried coming up with so many excuses, but I found it strange that she knew everything about my life, but I knew nothing about her life. So when we were in the eighth grade, I insisted that we study at her house. Her house was average size like mine, but her mom was a monster. When I entered her house, I saw her mom and she was ugly. I couldn't believe she gave birth to a pretty girl like Lisa. No shoes allowed inside the house. Lisa immediately ran down and fetched me and we ran back up and shut the door. Her room was so neat, like nothing was out of place. I'm sorry about my mom. She's a bit of a neat freak. I stay in my room most of the time to stay out of everybody's way. I felt so sorry for Lisa. No wonder she's always getting into trouble. Her home is so scary to live in. After that day, I told her she could come to my house whenever she felt like it. But little did I know, that was a mistake. This one time when I was in 10th grade, I entered my house with Lisa and my parents were having an argument. What are we gonna do? The bank gives us less than a month to pay or else we have to move out? Where will we go? I don't know, we could ask your brother for help. I couldn't handle this, so I ran out of the house with Lisa behind me. Taylor, wait! My mind and heart were racing as I ran through a nearby forest. I froze and Lisa bumped into my back. Shh, we have to hide. There was a boy digging a hole in the ground, so I quickly pulled Lisa and hid behind a big oak tree. What's going on? I don't know. Looks like he's digging a hole. The boy had a hoodie on, so we couldn't see his face. And then we saw him place a big bag in the hole. Lisa kept bumping her head into mine to take a closer look and then stepped onto a stick which made the boy look our way. We both held hands tightly with our hearts racing, hoping he didn't see us. He didn't because after a couple of seconds, he left. Okay, we can go now. Let's go see what he put in the hole. Lisa, no, what if he comes back? She didn't hear a word I said and went skipping to the spot where the suitcase was buried and then started digging with her hands. This is none of our business. I think we should go. What if we find a body in the suitcase? We could be heroes and on the news. How can a body fit in such a small bag? Lisa had such a wild imagination. I wish I had her courage sometimes, but this time she was out of hand. Eventually she got to the bag and when she opened it, our mouths <gasps> dropped. The bag was filled with money. Oh my God, we are rich. No, we have to put it back. Are you crazy? You need this money. You hurt your parents. If you don't pay the bank, you and your parents won't have a house. All that money was so tempting after what she reminded me about, but my conscience would haunt me day and night. It's still wrong to take someone's money. Put it back. When I tried to take the bag out of Lisa's hand, she tugged back, refusing to do the right thing. And while we were at it, the boy with the hoodie appeared and stood in front of us. We both screamed and ran for our lives as Lisa still held on to the bag. What are you doing? Just throw the bag down. Are you crazy? This is ours now. The boy was right behind us and Lisa suddenly picked up a rock and aimed it at the boy's foot, making him trip. 
I felt so bad for him, and yet still continued running away. When we got to my house, I shut the door of my room, and Lisa placed the bag on my bed, smiling widely. It's time to celebrate, girl! What? I'm flippin' freaking out here! You took the boy's money and then hurt the poor boy! Well, that'll teach him to never hide his money in a hole again! <laughs> we have to take it back! Lisa ignored me and started taking some money out of the bag and then took the rest with her. I took my half and you have yours. Now go to the bank and help your parents out. Before I could refuse, she left and I was left standing gazing at a pile of money on my bed. I did not sleep well that night and when I went down to get a glass of milk, I found dad in the kitchen with his head down on the table. It looked like he was crying. Dad, are you okay? No, Taylor, I'm not okay but you need to go to bed. My heart sank when I saw the agony on his face, so I ran back to my room, grabbed a stack of cash, and left it on the table in front of him. There, now you can pay the mortgage. Taylor, where did you get all this money from? Please don't be mad. I sat down and told Dad the whole story, and instead of taking the money, he looked upset. Tomorrow, we will go back to the woods, find that boy, and give him back his money. This is not how we do things, Taylor. But Dad, it wasn't me. Dad wouldn't hear me out, but when I got up in the morning, Dad was gone. When I told Lisa what happened, she started freaking out. What is up with you and your family? I hope this doesn't get me into any trouble because I already spent some of the money. As you can see, I'm all Gucci covered. He's not gonna get you into trouble, but he's right. We should give… While I was explaining to Lisa, her eyes widened, and when I looked behind me, the boy with the hoodie was in our school. Uh, how did you get through the gates? I go to this school. Now give me back what you stole. We don't know what you're talking about, and we've never seen you before in our life. If you don't give me back that bag, I'm gonna make your lives a living nightmare. Lisa pushed past him and I walked nervously behind her. She didn't feel an ounce of guilt, but all that changed when we went out for recess and found both our lockers on fire. Oh my god, Lisa, we have to give back that boy's money. No way, I'm telling the principal. There should be a CCTV camera for this. The school tried looking at the cameras, but it was all blank. And as we walked home after school, the boy stood in front of us looking like a freaking creep from a horror movie. Don't be scared of him, Taylor. He's just a kid. Why don't we just give him back the money and then he'll leave us alone? You should listen to your friend. But instead, she pushed him and he flung out a bottle of skunk juice and threw it all over her. She screamed and ran home crying. I'll get you your money back. Just give me some time. Fine. But if I don't have it by tomorrow morning, you don't want to know what's next. When I got home, I found mom and dad smiling and looking <laughs> cheerful. Hey, Taylor, you saved us from losing the house. What are you talking about? Well, I know I gave you a lecture last night, but after you went to bed, I spoke to your mom and she suggested that we pay off our debts and then save up again to pay back the boy in the forest. No, you don't understand. The boy is in my school, and Lisa and I have to pay him back. My parents came with me to school the next day to speak to the boy, but he never came to school. We tried the next day as well, and he still wasn't around. So I took my parents to the forest, and we walked for miles, looking for a cabin or a house, but there was nothing. It was like this boy just vanished. Lisa was over the moon, and soon after, when we were in 11th grade, she started acting very strange towards me. Like this one time, while she was standing in line at the cafeteria and I approached her from behind, she just shrieked. Gosh, Taylor, you don't need to frighten people like that. It's really not funny. Calm down, Lisa. What's gotten into you? Just wait for me at the table. I felt a little taken aback, but I did as she said. And while we were eating lunch, she kept looking behind her. Are you gonna tell me what's wrong? Listen, I think I'm just gonna sit at the library during my lunch from now on. Okay, I don't mind the library. No, I wanna be there by myself. After that, she just got up and left. And when I tried reaching out to her again after school, she just pushed me so hard that I injured my arm. And she didn't even care. I told you to stay away from me. Have you lost your mind or something? My arm is injured. Well, go tell that to someone who cares. Lisa's actions made no sense. I wanted to be angry with her, but we had such a deep history. It was really hard for me to just leave her like that. I managed to get a band-aid for my arm, and then I decided to pay Lisa a visit. No matter what was said, I needed to know what was going on. When I got to her house, I was surprised to see her sitting with some boy in her yard. 
so I hid behind the wall to figure out what was actually going on. Whatever they were talking about made Lisa cry, and then I decided to bravely face them. Hi, Lisa. What's going on? Taylor, I told you to stay away from me. You know I can't do that. You're my best friend. Who's this? The guy she was with turned to me and smiled wickedly. Hi, Taylor. I am Jerry. You're… you're that guy from the forest. I tried looking for you. Yeah, right. Because of you and your friend? My dad fell into a coma because I didn't have the money to pay the doctors. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. Well, sorry doesn't fix the mess. Are you back for revenge now? Lisa, what did he say to you? Is this the reason you've been pushing me away? I was trying to protect you. He threatened to hurt you if I didn't help him with stealing and shoplifting. I told him we weren't friends anymore, and I had to act like it in case he was watching us. Jerry suddenly grabbed me and Lisa started screaming. Take me instead. Please leave her alone. I'm the one who insisted on taking the money. Please. Too late. Now you will never see your friend again. You better not follow us or tell anyone. I tried to kick him, but he was too strong. He took me to a part of the forest I had never been to before and into a neatly built house. If you let me go, I'll try and get back all your money. <laughs> You're funny. Do you know how many years my father worked to make all that? But then why didn't he just put it in a bank? Because we don't trust banks and we don't trust people. Because they lie and steal like you and your friend did. So what are you going to do? I'm going to keep you here and then ask for a ransom. But my parents are not millionaires. Yeah, but they're richer than your loser friend's parents. And no problem if they're not. They'll just have to sell the house they paid for with my money. Then he started pacing up and down like a mad person. My eyes fell on a long vase. I took a bold step, grabbed the vase, and knocked him down. And then I ran as fast as I could. But then he was right behind me. When he eventually caught up to me, I screamed my lungs out, and Lisa came running with the police. My parents hugged me tight and dad apologized for everything. Jerry was arrested and when Lisa and I watched the news later that evening, we found out that Jerry's father was a criminal who robbed banks and the police were looking for, for a very long time. So he lied to us? His father was not in a coma. It was their plan to get more money. Well, at least they're in prison where they belong. And no more secrets and no more stupidity. Can you do that? Yes for secrets. No for stupidity. Yeah, she might do crazy things, but she always has my back. One good friend is always better than a thousand.